release of iOS 4, iPhone and iPod Touch owners now have the option of pairing their devices with a Bluetooth keyboard. With rumors surfacing that Apple will soon make available version of iWork for these devices, there's definitely potential for the using these devices as an ultra-mobile replacement for a computer. In this video, I'll compare some of the products out there that can help make that happen. Uh, it's not a review or endorsement of any of these products, but more of an overview of what's out there. Now, there's two types of hardware that will need to comfortably work. Uh, the first is, of course, the Bluetooth-enabled keyboard. The first one I'll look at is the Apple Wireless Keyboard. If you're wanting to stick with Apple for your hardware, you can get this super thin aluminum keyboard for about 70 bucks. If you haven't used an Apple keyboard recently, you might want to try this one out before jumping in. The low-profile calculator-style keys seem to inspire a lot of love or hate in customer reviews. There's also the Matthias Folding Keyboard. If you're short on space, this keyboard by the Canadian company Matthias can be folded in half. Not quite small enough to fit in the pocket of your jeans, but probably small enough to fit in a small bag or purse. It also has the advantage of having a full number keypad, which is something the Apple keyboard doesn't have. Macworld did a review of this a couple years ago, and they noted that the layout of some of the keys was slightly odd. There's also a lack of a dedicated caps lock key. If you're looking for a really cheap and durable solution, you may be interested in one of these flexible keyboards that are currently being made by a whole bunch of different companies. These keyboards can be rolled up for easy transport and easily cleaned if you spill your drink on them. You will, however, need a flat, hard surface in order to use it. You also need to keep in mind that because the keys are soft, it's a very different experience from typing on a normal keyboard. Based on some of the comments on this thread on Engadget, you really have to mash down on the keys in order to get them to register. The advantage of these is that they are somewhat cheaper than the other types, and they go for around $25 to $40. The second piece of the puzzle is a stand in order to prop up the device, and there's no shortage of people out there trying to sell you a stand. If you've got money to burn, the M2 stand by Alago might be the quickest way to separate you from your cash. At $25 to $30, it brings a lot of the curvy aluminum look that Apple users have come to expect. If you're on a budget, Alago also makes the S2 stand, which is a cutout metal brick that sells for about $5. If you can live without the aluminum, this tiny plastic stand by Crabble folds up to the size of a credit card. You can find it at most places online for about $5. If the talk of spending all this money on things that don't actually do anything makes you a little queasy, there's no shortage of DIY stand designs. I've posted links to some of the nicer looking ones on ThoughtShots.com. Finally, there's the all-in-one solution. Thanks to a video that was put out recently by Andy and Otko, we also know that the iPad keyboard dock will also work with an iPhone 3GS. Priced about the same as the Apple wireless keyboard, it has a stand built in and has iOS specific keys that let you access the home screen, iPod controls, and display brightness. Unfortunately, you'll only be able to use it in portrait mode, and the dock stand does seem to make the shape of it a little unwieldy for packing. Thanks for watching. As always, you can view this video or any of my other technology learning videos for free at ThoughtShots.com, where you can also find a full transcript of this video, as well as show notes and related web links.